most people here probably know someone who has Parkinson's disease. And if you don't, chances are, as our population ages, you will. <coughs> most people could probably also recognise the common symptom of the disease, the resting tremor. However, a lot of people don't realise that Parkinson's also has many non-movement related symptoms, like depression and dementia. And it's this combination of neurological and movement symptoms that means Parkinson's has a devastating impact, both on patients and on their families. And unfortunately, at the moment, there's not much that can be done. There is no cure, no treatments to slow progression, and the treatments that are available to target the symptoms are not effective long term and have negative side effects. The ultimate aim of my PhD project is to find new treatments for Parkinson's that target the disease at its earliest stages before irreversible damage has occurred. But in order to do this, we first need to understand what it is that actually causes the disease. The logical first step towards finding the cure, the cause of any disease, is to compare people with and without the disease and find the difference. Parkinson's affects all sorts of people people from different backgrounds, different ancestries, who have lived very different lives. Therefore, to understand the cause of the disease, we need to look into these people's genetics, their backgrounds, and their lifestyles. So people have started to do this. They've compared the DNA of people with and without Parkinson's, and they have found a number of gene mutations that can make you more likely to develop the disease. But for a massive 90% of patients, there is no known genetic cause for the disease. This tells us that Parkinson's is a complex disease that could be caused by both environmental and genetic insults. So my project looks at both the environmental and genetic risk factors for Parkinson's. I look at the ways things like diet or exposure to chemicals in the environment can affect our genes and make us more susceptible to Parkinson's. What I have found is that Parkinson's could be caused by a combination of specific minor insults, none of which alone is enough to cause the disease. This combination of insults starts a cascade of cellular events that feeds forward on itself, becoming more and more damaging over time, and eventually leading to Parkinson's diagnosis in later life. What's even more exciting is that by treating a cell model with this combination of events, I've been able to map this cascade over time and pinpoint specific changes in lipids, proteins, and genes. I am now working on targeting these changes using drugs and other therapies to stop the cascade. This is the first step towards developing new therapies for Parkinson's that treat the disease at its earliest stages, before irreversible damage has occurred.